The NAACP getting into the fight against congestion pricing now over on Staten Island. And more than 1,000 nurses are set to go on strike next week if a deal isn't reached at Staten Island University Hospital. Joining us this morning to weigh in on these issues and more is Borough President Peter Pasella. So good morning, Borough President. Thanks for taking the time on this Monday morning. My pleasure. Okay, happy so, Monday. Oh, happy Monday to you, too. So let's begin with uh, the latest on that looming nurses strike. Their contract expires next Sunday. Both sides are seems far from reaching a deal right now on wages. So when will negotiations resume? Well, I mean, fundamentally, uh, there's nothing perhaps worse than a, when the hospital has to shut down due to a strike. So uh, my hope is that the parties continue to negotiate in, in good faith, which I believe they will. Uh, and my great hope, especially in this Easter week, is that a miracle occurs and uh, that they have a resolution and there is no stri strike. So there is still time. Um, I hope that uh, it happens for the good of the people of Staten Island. I understand when these th types of things happen. Uh, but uh, with all that said, just don't waste a second. Keep negotiating. And my, my hope is that uh, some resolution is, uh, is agreed upon before, uh, before next week. Is there a contingency plan if they do? I think in all of these cases, there always is, uh, whether they bring in uh, folks from elsewhere, perhaps. Uh, but this is not new, right? Uh, the strike is not a new thing. And uh, one of the things you have to do, you know, you can't just shut the hospital down. Yeah. Uh, you have to be prepared to, to bring folks in if necessary. So I have to assume there are contingency plans in place. Yeah. All right. Well, let's switch gears now. You've obviously been on the front lines on, on the fight against congestion pricing. Last week, uh, the Staten Island chapter of the NAACP joined you in that fight. So what is their position on the issue exactly? Well, for, for a variety of reasons, the people of Staten Island oppose congestion pricing. Uh, a, you, you know, you just showed the traffic uh, situation, the Gowanus. If you, if you have to ride, drive your car to work, as many people do on Staten Island, you have to pay a toll to the Arizona Bridge the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, and now uh, they want to impose a third. So it, it'll be a financial burden. Uh, it will increase traffic on Staten Island. The MTA was required to do a uh, study pursuant to the federal government, uh, and it will increase traffic. And even worse, uh, it will increase air pollution, especially the area of the North Shore of Staten Island, which is uh, has a majority black and Hispanic population, and it's designated uh, what they call an environmental justice area. So what will happen is if congestion pricing is implemented, air pollution will actually get worse in that area of Staten Island and will get progressively worse over the next 20 years. That's their own study. That's not my opinion. That's their own study. So the NAACP, uh, the UFT president, Mike Mulgrew, uh, almost every elected official on Staten Island and a bipartisan group of community leaders have opposed it for that reason. In other words, how can you make things worse intentionally and deliberately well, at the same time, uh, the population in the demographics, that is, in the Central Business District, is actually 66 percent white and 20 percent black and Hispanic. And the average household income there is $300,000 versus $62,000 for the North Shore of Staten Island. So for all these reasons, we want this congestion pricing to, to stop before it hurts and harms more people. Yeah. Uh, and that's why the NAACP Staten Island chapter weighed in last week. Okay, so with all the lawsuits that are happening, right, the MTA is saying, well, we did that study and it didn't actually say those things, and that's why they're moving forward with it, including um, ambulance response times, right? They're saying they put some ads on some buses saying that congestion pricing would help ambulance response times on, on the island, and you're saying actually it's quite the opposite. So explain the difference of opinion there. Well, they should read their own study. <laughs> they're the ones who said that the traffic will increase on Staten Island. They're the ones who said pollution will get worse. And they're the ones who said that people, like the reason why the UFT and 400,000 municipal workers have weighed in in support of our lawsuit is because it will cost about another three or $4,000 per year out of their pocket to get to work. Because for the last 40 or 50 years, the MTA has neglected the people of Staten Island. We don't have a subway system. We don't have a commuter rail. So as a result, people were forced to drive their car. Just imagine if every other borough only had one line. But to the ambulance um, uh, response time, you know, this was insulting uh, folks uh, who were driving, uh, uh, taking an express bus back last week, watching ads. Now, if traffic will get worse on Staten Island, 
and their ads said ambulance times will get better. That doesn't make any sense on Staten Island. It will make sense, perhaps, in Manhattan, which is what they care about. And I have no, <laughs> no qualms with the people of, Staten, uh, of Manhattan who want to make things better for themselves. But they can't, in good conscience, say that traffic will get worse if congestion pricing is implemented and ambulance time and response times and EMT, EMT times will get better. Mm. It doesn't fly. Okay. It's misleading. And they should get back to, uh, to reading their own reports. You know, let's face it. I mean, traveling to and from Staten Island, it's not easy. Um, maybe we turn to uh, Pete Davidson, Colin Jost. Maybe we can use their ferry. What do you think? I think it's great. <laughs> you know, Peter, is, uh, we want the best for Peter and Colin. They bring out the best of Staten Island. Uh, you know, there are, there are some reports now that there's been sort of discussions and, and plans behind the scenes to retrofit and renovate the ferry. Uh, whatever works best for them, we're happy. We would love to have that boat on Staten Island, uh, if and when it's ever completed, it'll be a nice destination and tourist spot. Uh, but fundamentally, uh, you know, whatever is good for Peter and Colin, we're, we're happy with. And, and might I just add, take the pleasure of saying what an honor and privilege it is to be in the same hour as Cardinal Dolan. Well, uh, what a blessing in this Easter week. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's coming up in about 10 minutes. So uh, we'll talk to him and live, but also we'll keep us posted about this boat, okay? This floating entertainment venue, whatever it may be, we're interested. And happy Easter well, it, It's actually quite exciting what they're they're planning. Yeah. Uh, some of the folks who've been doing it, so some of the uh, the reports of what they're doing is going to be very, very exciting. All right. Well, we're, you're, you guys locked in, all right? <laughs> Teasing us with that you one. Got we'll it. have you back soon. Thank you very much. All right.